Hello students. Once again, we are back to the business law session. So today, we are going to discuss about the classification of the contracts. In our previous class, we had studied what is the meaning of the contract, definition of the contract, the essentials of the valid contract. Now we will move to the, yeah, the classification of the contracts or kinds of contracts or types of contracts. So usually from your examination point of view, this question will be for two marks. Usually they will ask you here yeah, two marks question. So you must be able to write a four to five lines. So they may ask you what is an implied contract, what is a wide contract, what is a viable contract, what is an executory contract. Such question may come in the examination. So you must be able to here write here four to five lines on this aspect. So we will discuss here the <coughs> basis for the classification of the contract and the types of the contract here in those categories. So with examples, students as I mentioned to you in the law here always see that you give the examples. Examples will help you to here mainly make the examiner understand what you have written. So he will come to understand that you have understood here the law applicable there. So for that reason examples are very much necessary and I told you wherever decided cases as in our previous class we had studied about one case Balfour versus Balfour case. Like this you will be having the other here the case lines. So we are going to study as well they come. So today this is a very small topic. We will be discussing this classification of the contract. Broadly the contracts are classified based on the formation of the contract, validity of the contract, performance of the contract. So this is the base for mainly the classification. The formation of the contract validity of the contract, performance of the contract. So if you see this here, how the contracts are classified, what is the criteria taken for the classification? So there are three criteria taken. That is the first one is the formation. This is the second one validity and the third one. Based on this, the classification is there. And again, in each part, you have got three types of contracts here. So we try to understand each part with examples. So first one we will take the formation. Based on the formation of the contract, the contracts you can find is written contract, oral contract and implied contract. Written contract, oral contract and implied contract. So these are three types based on the formation, establishment. The how the contract is established. Either it is established in a written form or it may be in oral form or maybe in the implied form. So with that we will take this mainly for the discussion in the written form. The contract may be in the written form that is in the words written. So it must be in a here put it in the writing. Nowadays here you can see the Modern technology can be also applied. Now if you send the mailing, the contract is formed based on here you are mainly the mail. That's also in the written form. So it comes under the written form. So it must be written. That is here it must be in the words that we speak and that is in a written form. So written contract. And in the law we find that there are certain contracts which you cannot make it by other means. You have to establish it in a written form itself. You cannot use any other form. So here in some of the cases, circumstances, only here written, here mainly contract is acceptable, is enforceable. For example, 
if you are making any gift, you cannot make it oral. So the gift, it must be in the form of writing. It must be in the form of a written words. So the gift deed has to be made. Likewise, the will. So these are all the things what we see, they must be in a written form. So writing that is based on that, here the contract is formed, that we call it as a written contract. Oral, sometimes here, here the oral, the words are spoken. So if the words which are in the written, we call it as a written form, the words same words which are spoken and the contract is formed, we call it as oral contract. Oral contract. For example, the contract is established here over a telephonic talk. So that becomes a oral. Because now the commercial world has grown so complex and there is no time here to put it in the writing. It is here the contracts are established orally. The contracts are here. So there we find here the mainly the contract is said to be in oral form. Many contracts here are established here orally. That is the words are spoken. And the oral contract is also permissible. But where the law is very clear that the contract must be in a written form, you cannot make it oral. You should here mainly adopt the written form. Otherwise, where it is not mandatory here that it should be in writing, so you can make the contract to oral in India. Here, the oral contracts are also acceptable. They are enforceable. So, written contract and oral contract. Usually, these are called as express contracts. So, express contract means either they are in the written form, the express contracts. Either they are in the written form or they are in oral. So, oral or written. They are known as express contract. The third one, if you see, implied contract. So, what is here implied? So, based on the circumstances of the case and the conduct of the parties, the inference is here drawn that the contractual obligation is there. The contract is established. Inference is there. Presumption is there. That there is a contractual obligation. So it is based on the conduct of the parties. That is what we say implied contract. So day to day here people are entering unknowingly here their contract and such contracts are called as implied contracts. Without your knowledge you will be entering into a contract here based on the conduct of your mainly the party we can understand he has entered into the contractual obligation. The contract is formed. For example, going to a hotel to have a cup of tea. That is it, you are making a contract with him. You are going there and having the cup of tea on a here condition that you will pay for that coffee or the snacks, whatever you have there. So that is what we call it as implied. He is running the here business for to earn the profit. You are going there and it is not, he is giving you here the free coffee there. So you have to pay for that. Entering into a here KSRTC bus, it is a, here a contract. What is the contract? That you will pay for the transit. So from where to where you are mainly going, whatever charges is there, you will pay for that. That is implied contract. So like this, here it is based on the mainly the conduct of the parties. So conduct of the parties here today you, a person gets into a case at the bus and he says that I don't know that there was a, a payment for this transit. I thought it was a running free. So that cannot be here mainly acceptable. When once you have stepped in the bus it is understood that you will pay for it. So that is implied based on the conduct. Based on the conduct of the parties, the contract is said to be established. Like this, this is what we have. A written contract, oral contract, implied contract. These are three mainly the here how the contracts are formed. How the contractual obligation is established. So for example, one more usually this can be 
ask for your caselets in a section D for five marks. So just I will give you the facts of the case. Try to understand here what is the mainly the gist of the file, mainly the case, and how you come to the conclusion. Now here the passenger here gets down here from the train at a platform and keeps his luggage on the platform. Immediately a coolie comes and picks up the passenger's luggage and starts walking towards here the exit and the passenger follows him. He never stops him. He follows him and the coolie goes and keeps the luggage in the taxi and he asks for the labor charges for carrying the goods of the passenger. The passenger says that here he did not ask you to carry that mainly the luggage. He did not say to the coolie that you should carry the passenger. The coolie has picked up it voluntarily and he has gone to here the taxi stand. But whether the passenger is mainly entitled to pay or not that is the question now. So the question is that he has not mainly ordered the coolie to carry the luggage. But his conduct shows that he has accepted the service of the coolie and the coolie will be not doing the service here free. He mainly does for his livelihood, it is his mainly the business to carry the goods of his passengers. So if at all you did not want his service, you would have stopped him. The passenger would have stopped that person. That no, I will carry my luggage myself. But when you have accepted his service, it is understood from the contact here mainly the conduct of the party that he has accepted his service and he has to be paid. Such contracts are called as implied contracts. Now just I gave you this uh, some examples for this uh, mainly the here yeah, implied contract. Usually in your examination here yeah, they may ask you for two marks here yeah, what is meant by an implied contract. What do you mean by the term implied contract? Or as I told you, now the case of the police, such cases may be given in your caselets. So you have to decide whether the contract is established here or not. So that is a mainly the first, the formation of the contract, written, oral and implied. Or broadly you can say in a mainly two parts, express contracts and implied contracts. Express contracts are in written and oral, implied contracts based on the contract. Now the second category, now we are coming to. The second category is on validity of the contract. The validity of the contract. So in this again we have three. The contract may be valid. The contract may be white. And the contract can be voidable. Valid contract, void contract, voidable contract. See the three meaning the result. So valid contract means here that here it fulfills all the essentials which we have studied in section 10. It fulfills all the essential of the validity and it is enforceable in the court of law and we call it as the valid contract. So it is fulfilling all the essentials of section 10. What we have studied there. So there is a proposal, there is an offer, consideration the competency of the parties, the consent is free and the legal object is there and the agreement is not here declared expressly wide by the law, the every possibility of the performance is there. So all the essentials are complied here. So for that reason we call it as a valid contract. So valid contract is a contract which fulfills the essentials of the section 10. So we call it as valid contract. So we are speaking on the validity of the contract. Sometimes the contract is said to be here wide contract. Wide contract. Usually unenforceable in the court of law. Wide. See the difference. Wide agreement is different. Wide agreement cannot lead to the contract. Or the contract is already formed. Contract is already formed. Later it becomes white. White means not enforceable in the court of law, unenforceable in the court of law. So what it means initially when the contract was 
therefore and it was valid it was a valid the change in the circumstances leads to here the contract here to become white the contract becomes white there so that is what we call it as the white contract if the agreement is itself white you cannot make it as a here the part of the contract you cannot establish the contract itself so white agreement for example minor agreement is a white agreement and a minor agreement it cannot lead to a contract you cannot make a contract there it becomes white but the thing is that when we are using the word white contract can a contract be declared white yes it is under certain circumstances you can you can here yeah, that the contract may be declared as a white contract because here yeah, that contract when it was formed it was valid but later the change in the circumstances has here yeah, vitiated the validity of that contract and it can be declared as white now for example the one example here yeah, a and b make a contract at bombay a says his goods are on voyage from here london to bombay immediately after coming to bombay the goods will be delivered to here b and b says that he will pay the price so it is an agreement is there and it though the contract is there the remoteness is there so once the goods come here he has to deliver the goods and the contract he will b will pay the price this is mainly the facts the goods are on voyage from london to bombay now so when they are on the voyage itself here the goods are destroyed because of a storm a storm comes natural calamity takes place the ship is destroyed in which goods are being carried all the goods are mainly ruined now what happens to the contract made between here the a and b so the impossibility of performance comes it cannot be here yeah, mainly performed only so because it has vitiated the validity what is the main thing is that subject matter is uh, destroyed so the contract is uh, mainly here yeah, declared as void it becomes void agreement here yeah, void contract so void agreement void contract initially void so change the circumstances or change the law also may lead to the contract becoming void for example you are mainly running here a distillery business in here mainly one of the state of india and uh, the law has permitted and you have already started and one fine morning there is a dry law here that you should not manufacture the liquor in that state so what happens you have to close down your uh, mainly distillery you cannot say that uh, before the law has uh, here mainly come into existence uh, that you have already done the business you have to adhere with the law so change the law vitiates the contract here it becomes void there such words are to be used there such examples are to be mentioned there so valid contract void contract voidable contract voidable contract so this is a third type in the validity voidable contract voidable contract means the contract which is here enforceable at the option of the one party but not the other party so you know that usually in a contract there are two parties so here the one party gets the right to here enforce that here the other party doesn't have it the contract enforceable at the option of the one party but not the other party is called as voidable contract this is for two marks they may ask you in the examination it is a two marks question here from your example for example where such circumstances arise where we get such circumstances so for example here if here the consent is not free in a contract so in section 10 we have seen what is a mainly the requirement in section 10 we have seen what is the requirement that here the consent must be a free consent the consent must be a free consent now if the consent is not free then here we find that 
here one of the essentials of the valid contract is missing. So what we find here, if the consent is obtained by here applying the force or coercion, giving a threat to the person's life and his consent is obtained, we say that consent is not free, it is obtained by coercion. So such a person whose consent is obtained by coercion, by force, he has got the option that either he can enforce the contract or he can decide the contract. There is an option for him. But the other party who has applied the force, he doesn't have the right to enforce that contract. So only one party has, usually we call it is an aggrieved party. The aggrieved party has the right. Aggrieved party means who has been at loss in the contract. The aggrieved party has the mainly the right to enforce that contract but not the other party. The other party is usually called as the defaulter. Defaulter and aggrieved. So this is voidable contract. Only one party has got the right to enforce this here mainly the contract. So we call it as voidable contract. So if the consent is obtained of a, a party by applying force or undue influence or by committing fraud in these circumstances the consent is not said to be free and the contract becomes voidable. So this is here for example for the voidable contract. In your examination you may get this particularly for a two marks question. And in the last the performance of the contract again three executed contract the executed contract executed contract means both the parties to the contract have fulfilled their obligations now for example here a person goes to the grocery shop and asks for here 5 kg of sugar the shopkeeper gives the 5 kg sugar and the person pays the price of the sugar so it is both the obligations are here mainly fulfilled now both the obligations are said to be executed the person has got the sugar and he has paid the price for that and uh, the shopkeeper has given the sugar for that which he has got uh, the money there so we call that such here mainly here contract is executed both the parties have fulfilled their obligations second one is executory contract so in certain circumstances what we see one party one party has completed his mainly obligation but the other party has yet to here fulfill his obligation so we call such contracts as executory court here contract so one party yet to perform now for example taking the groceries on the credit basis so you go to a grocery shop and you take here the grocery on credit basis and after the here mainly end of the month here you will be paying the amount to whatever grocery you have taken for that you will be paying the price. So the whole month you will be taking the grocery whenever you need it. So at that time here you are not paying him but the shopkeeper has fulfilled his obligation he has given you the goods keeping the here faith that you will pay the price. So your part is yet to be executed, you have to pay for the price there. So the best example for an executive contract is taking the groceries on credit. So you have received the goods but you have not paid the price so which you are going to pay later. So still it is in the executory. Once you pay the amount then it is we say it is executed. That is what we call it as an executory contract. Partly executed and partly executory. These are mainly in this two parties what we have got. Partly one person has mainly executed and the other party has also partly executed. But still it is to be completed by both the parties. So we use the word partly executed, partly executed. For example, when we say partly executed and partly executory. Both the parties are yet to fulfill certain conditions. Now for example, A has sold his mainly car to B. A sells his car here to B here for 2 lakhs. Here B 
here pays 1 lakh and takes the delivery of the car. So he has given in good faith that another 1 lakh will be paid later, he gives the car. But still the documents of the car are not transferred from A to B. So still A has to perform certain obligation. That is still he has mainly the obligation on him. So partly executed. He has delivered the car but still the car ownership is not transferred. He has to. And uh, B has received the car and he has paid 1 lakh. Yet he had to pay 1 lakh. His is also partly executed. He has to also fulfill certain obligations. So like this partly executed and partly executed. So in your examination when such questions come, usually you have what is an implied contract, what is a voidable contract, what is a void contract, what is an executory contract. Usually you have what these questions, these are important from the examination point of view. So keep this in your mind and with the examples you have to here give the meaning of these. So this is a very small topic you have got on the classification of the contracts. So we are mainly coming to the end of the first topic, definition and meaning of the contract, essentials of the contract and the classification of the contract. In module 1 we have completed the first topic. Now we will be in the next, we will be studying each of the essentials which you have studied in section 10. Now we are going into the details. We will be studying in detail here the essentials. So first we will be taking in our next session we will start with the proposal or the offer. So what is a proposal? What is here mainly the meaning of proposal? Here essential rules of the proposal. Then here when does the proposal lapse? So such questions will come in your examination. So in the next session we will start with the here study of the essentials of the contract in detail. The first one will be here the proposal. So we will continue it in the next session. Then.